Hi everyone and welcome back to our state tree series. In the last episode we went through how to make a binding for the AI perception system and now in this episode we're going to show you how to actually use it and bring the information out into your state tree. So let's jump in and take a look. So we're continuing on from where we left off last time. Last time we made a generic asset uh, for global bindings and in there we created a binding for perception updated. We just made it output to a boolean for now and a pinch string. Well, now we can actually bring that information back out of here. So what I want to do is I want to know who the actor is that we are targeting. So if you've done this before with AI behavior trees, it's very similar. But what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to pass through an actor from a task such as this into the state tree. Okay? So First things first, we need this actor to come out. So this actor, we're going to make a variable. We're going to go into our, in, our state tree, go to the parameters, and we're going to make a new parameter. We name it target actor. And this could be a type of actor, like so. Now we've got that in there, we want to bring that uh, feed that sorry from this task and the way we do that is by using a property reference so let's go ahead and add a variable to our task for global bindings and this will be target actor prop ref and this is going to look for a variable type called a state tree property reference you'll make this editable now what a property reference basically means, it's going to pass through a property as a reference uh, pin rather than a constant pin. So with that now exposed there, I can go back to the state tree and you'll see <clears throat> I've got it now appearing here. Now one thing I forgot to do is when you compile it, you have to set what type of reference is it going to be. In this case, it'd be an actor. So now I'll compile it <clears throat> and I go back to target actor prop. And there it is okay and we can now link that to this parameter target actor by clicking on a little downward arrow go to parameters and choose target actor okay so that will feed into this target actor parameter let's go back to our global bindings and show you how to actually use this verbal reference you can drag it out and you're going to get the property reference and this gives you the pass by reference pin here. So it's a diamond shape, meaning if we change this value, it's going to change it in the original property. So now I'll just drag this out and do set by ref variable. And the value is going to be our actor here. Like so. If this was successful, we're going to set it to the actor. If it's not successful, we want to make it so like lose sight of us. We want to clear this actor reference. So what we're going to do is we're going to go take out our sense actor. We don't really need it really. And plug that in here. And successfully sensed is going to be used to select which variable is going to be passed through in here. So we'll do select. And you want to choose the one that's got just a white icon. Plug that into the value for a set reference. And the actor will go into true. And the false is going to leave blank. Like so. Okay, we're good to go now. So now I can go back to my state tree. What it's going to do when we see that, when the actor sees us, sorry, it's going to pass through into our target actor reference here. So let's say I want him to go into this hostile branch over here. Well, to do that, I need to create the transition over to the hostile branch. So interrupt whatever we're doing, basically observe everything that's going on. Basically what you had on the behavior tree, an observer, which will observe what's going on and then jump out to the hostile tree. And the way that's handled is by state tree events. So if I go to the wonder and go down to transition, you can click on this and we've got a trigger here and it'll say on state completed and that's the normal behavior you'd expect 
But what we're going to do is we're going to change that to on event. Now the event it's going to require is going to require a gameplay tag. So we need to make a gameplay tag for this, but then we can tell it where we want it to go to. So transition to and make it go to hostile, for example, if it's seen someone. Okay. So let's go ahead and pass that into our gameplay tag manager. Let's go into a project settings, gameplay tags, and we go to manage gameplay tags. And we add a new one. And we're going to do AI sensed actor. We're going to close this, and that'll be the event that we're going to use. So let's go back to our state tree here. And I can now click on the tag AI sensed actor. Click on this. And there we go. Okay. What we can also do is pass through the struct of the AI, the AI stimulus event. So on the payload struct here, we're going to define it as a AI stimulus. Like so. Okay. So that's going to take an event. Now, how do we actually trigger this event? So let's go back to our global bindings. And after we set the actor reference there, we want to trigger the event. Then we're going to add in here state tree event. You'll see state tree send event. And this function needs a payload, which would be the structure here. I'm going to drag this open and make a state tree event. It's going to require the tag. Well, we've made the tag, so let's put that in there. And they've got the payload. Now, the payload here requires an instance struct. Okay. So if I were to get the stimulus on its own, that won't go into there because it doesn't know exactly which one we are doing. So we need to make that instance. Okay, so we're going to drag out from our struct here. And we're going to do make instance struct. Plug that in there. And then the return value will go into the payload. Okay, brilliant. So that is our state tree event being triggered. So that should send us from here to here, the hostile event. Let's make an event on here to make it easy to see when this has happened. So I'm going to make it so they jump. So we've got that task already. So let's add a task here. Jump. And the pawn is going to be set to the actor reference. So let's see this working. Let's go back down, push play. And... When he sees us, he should jump. Okay. So that's all good. But what we want to do now is get him to chase us. So let's go back to our state tree. So instead of having it jump now, let's make it so it will chase us. So if we can just remove the jump task from hostile. And in this task list, we're going to use the built-in one for move to. Okay. Now... I have a few issues with this one, but for now it will do just fine. We'll make a better one in the future. So in here, we want to give it destination or target actor. Now we know what target actor we want. We want this one. So we're going to go to target actor and set that to parameter target actor. Okay. Next, we want to give this a condition. So it should only enter this hostile condition if it is actually set to something. So up on enter condition. Make a new condition here, and we'll do object class is valid. And the object we're looking at here can be our target actor. And the class of it we can put in as actor. Like so. Okay, so if the object class is valid, let it go through. Then at the bottom, you've got various things like acceptable radius and things like that. You can mess about with those as much as you wish. So let's see if that guy will now chase us around the map. Yep, there we go. So as you can see, one little issue he has is that when he reaches us, he just runs off. Okay? He wanders off. And the reason why he's wandering off is because what's happening is on the state tree. It goes to hostile, finishes it, so it reaches our location and goes back to the root. And the root here is going to execute these things in the selected order. So it's going to go friendly, wander first, 
and then it'll do the check for the event to go to hostile. Now hostile, you could make this transition back to itself. So if I go to the transition here, I go trigger on state completed, go back to hostile, so it just loops upon itself. That's all well and good and all, but you will see an issue with that. This may be fixed in later versions of Unreal. But as you can see, it just goes away. Now there is a way to, a couple of ways of fixing it. One is by adding a delay in here. So as a task, so we go into here and add the delay task and leave it as one second, that'd be fine. But as you can see, he'll run away and then he'll chase us. But when he reaches our location, he kind of stops, okay? The reason why he's stopping and then going off again is because the state tree, for some reason, doesn't do, like do this loop. I don't know why. It might be different in 5.6. I haven't tested it out yet. But it doesn't like doing this. It, like, it, it struggles the idea of this being complete and then going back on itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new move to task, the one that we want to use. So... Let's go ahead and make a new task. And we're going to call this one STT chase. The functions, enter state. And we're going to do a very simple thing where we just want to pass through the actor that's going to be running and the target actor they're going to be doing it to. So we're going to be using the AI move to node. So we need the pawn and we need the target actor. The pawn here. We're going to promote to variable, pawn. Target actor, we're going to drag out, promote to variable, target actor. Both of those are going to be made editable. And on success, I want it to basically do this again. Okay, it's going to keep on doing it until it fails. So we're going to come out of enter state, disconnect it, make a custom event in here, and start chase. We'll call this one. Enter AI move two. And we'll call start chase on the enter state there. And then on the AI move two, we're going to, on success, take to start chase again. Start chase. On foul, we want to finish the task. We'll say it was unsuccessful task. Now we're not going to do a succeeded for the finished task on here because we want it to keep looping this until target actor becomes invalid. So what we want to do on the start chase here is just convert our target actor here to a validated check. And if it's not valid, we want to do the finished task on this not valid, do a succeeded. Okay. Now, let's go back to our state tree. So let's take off our move to that we're using here. And delete that. And we are going to add in there a chase task. And here we can set the pawn and the target actor. So the pawn is going to be the actor reference. And the target actor is going to be the parameter target actor. File, save. Now, he'll just keep on chasing me until he loses sight of me. Or I do something to get out of the way. I might have to make him slower. Hold on. There you go. There you go. Now it's back on wandering. Okay. And if he sees me again, there he goes. He come after me. Okay. So yeah, my recommendation is to create your own chase task rather than rely on the move to. The move to seems to be better for uh, like going to a particular location and not a, con a continuous chasing sort of location. That's always happening. And don't forget that you want this to be really looping back to hostile when the state completed here. Um, you can also add another trig on here as well. If it fails, if you want to specify where it goes next, you can always go into and make another transition and do on state failed so that when we failed, it fails to reach us, we can make him do something else. For example, maybe he does an animation or whatever. But you can also do other things there too. But lots of options you can mess around with. So there we go, state trees and how to bring lots of things really. We know how to do property references now, taking ideas and uh, variables from a task into the state tree. 
and also how to make our own custom chase event using the case of using uh, transitions to change which way to go we're using the events lots of different things we've covered in this video now in the next video we're going to expand on that ai further and we're going to make it so that we can use things like eqs we can use things like them going to attack us all these various things we're going to be covering over the next few videos in this series so if you want to watch those videos next head over to patreon.com forward slash ryan laley where you can find all my videos early before everyone else from just one dollar a month Massive thank you to all our patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you all next time. Bye.